This is the Policy Council. My name is Okwaeme Agbaje. This week we're looking at the health sector. It seems from the evidence that our health sector is, like many other things, has broken down. Rich Nigerians go to Germany, Europe, America to take care of their health. Those from the north go to Egypt or Dubai. Even middle class Nigerians go to India or even Ghana these days to take care of their health. The evidence is that Nigerians have lost confidence in the health sector. Of course, the poor are left to die. What can we do? What are the causes? What are the solutions? Those are the questions myself and my distinguished panel will be looking at this week on the Policy Council. Enjoy the program. I have two guests on this panel today, two distinguished guests, Dr. Sheg Mugundimu. He was a former Lagos State Commissioner for Health, is a consultant family physician, and he's MD of Clearline International, an HMO. You're welcome. And of course, Mr. Lekon Asuni, He's managing director of Glaxo Smith Klein, um, the pharma side of it. And he's the president of um, Nilo Farm, a group of R&D based pharma companies and their representatives. You're both welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let, let, you let me talk to start with Dr. Gundimu, um, because you, you have probably multiple perspectives to the health sector as a physician, as a former commissioner, and somebody engaged in HMO. What would you, what's your diagnosis for the problems in the health sector in Nigeria? Why do all our people have to go abroad for medical treatment? You see, Nigeria should focus mainly on preventive medicine, mm. not curative. Preventive, promotive, and protective, which the HMO practice is, is all about. But unfortunately, our orientation is towards curative. And the same thing goes on with uh, our malaria which is the highest killer in Nigeria. In, the, in, in, in fact, about 53.8% of deaths in Nigeria is attributed to malaria, compared to 8, which is just 1.3%, as it were. Mm. So you can see the difference. But the emphasis now is on treatment of malaria, treatment, treatment, treatment. And I say, no, let us change our orientation. Let's go after preventive aspect of malaria like we have done, been done in Uruguay and in Paraguay. Mm -hmm. There's no mosquito in that country again. It's, as I talk to you now, 84% of drugs in the market for malaria, they are fake. Mm -hmm. 84%. Let me ask uh, Leko Asuni, he's both a pharmacist and the CEO of a, ma of dr of a drug manufacturing company. Why do we have this problem with fake drugs? I think uh, the, the major problem encouraging that fueling it has to do with the, the drug distribution system. Precisely. We have a chaotic drug distribution system. Uh, medicines are life-saving. They are supposed to improve the quality of health. But then you, and are supposed to be uh, handled under prescribed conditions, studied mm -hmm. conditions and what have you. But we have a situation where uh, our, most medicines are being hawked. Mm -hmm. They are being sold in the open market just like any other commodity. And, uh, by traders. By traders, traders. Uh, they're they not professionals. And uh, uh, because we equally have a very porous border, you know, uh, it's uh, equally fueling, you know, uh, the uh, penetration of uh, uh, fake medicines into the country. How can we address that? Uh, we, need, we need to streamline and structure the drug distribution system. Mm -hmm. um, there is need for... A, a clear track and trace uh, of medicines in mm. the supply chain, right from the point of manufacture to when it gets to the patient. Mm. We've not been able to evolve a, a robust you know, um, a system or model that will enable us to do that. And I'm aware government is doing quite a lot around that. Uh, lately, they've come up with uh, what they call the National Drug Distribution Policy, you know, trying to see how to ensure there's a structured uh, you know, uh, flow of products from the point of importation or manufacture down to the consumer. I think if this is put in place with enabling laws and the enforcement, and, uh, enforcement. enforcement, that will go a long way to actually you know, um, uh, help, help us to deal with it. South Africa used to be in a similar situation. India used to be in a similar situation. 
Uh, but they'll be able to structure their distribution system uh, to prevent or minimize the infiltration, infiltration of, of uh, fake, fake and substance drugs. On that note, let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Yes, this is still the Policy Council, and I still have Mr. Leko Asuni and Dr. Shego Gudimu with me on the program. Leko was talking about drug distribution. Do you have any comments on that? If there is no buyer, there will be no seller. The etiquette in Nigeria is such that everybody wants to go and buy drugs to get well. And unfortunately, the commercial outlets out there, they are all doing one form of advert on drugs or the other. There is one, this carried funny one, one man painted in yellow. It says uh, malaria. Kill man. malaria. Or malaria, you are sent to life. Malaria, I don't die. Quata, yeah, quata, quata, quata. You see, <laughs> things like that encourage people to go into self medication. And self medication encourages people to buy drugs off the counter, off the shelf. Let's uh, exchange this commercial tendency with evidence based diagnosis. Hmm. In Nigeria today, like I told you, I thought, 10 people that go to clinic anywhere in Nigeria, between six and eight are malaria and malaria complications. The rest are others, diarrhea, dysentery, mention it. But Today, let's talk about health insurance, yes. which you also are yes. equipped to talk about. Is it working? Why is it not working if it's not working? It's not working as it should be working by now. And the reason is simple, is the awareness. People are not even yet aware of the health insurance. We have 62 HMOs in Nigeria, as I talk to you now. But with all their efforts, it's so infinitesimal compared to the large population. Mm, the so if they have access to have that health insurance card, then any illness can be treated under the scheme. Um, what, drug manufacturing in Nigeria, my perception is that it's based on the generics, virtually uh, Panadol, Paracetamol, different variants of generic drugs. Why is that so? Can't we improve research and development and link that with drug manufacturing and have a more vibrant pharmaceutical manufacturing sector in Nigeria? Yeah, thanks, Okwe. I think your assessment is very right. Um, if you look at the uh, pharmaceutical sector value chain, mm. uh, in terms of value adding, there is little or no value adding in, in the manufacturing sector. Um, we produce essentially essential medicines and uh, you have uh, duplication or replication of similar lines across smaller companies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's claimed the combined capacity is able to meet national demand. Well, we leave that to be. But more importantly, there are a lot of factors actually mitigating against uh, a vibrant pharma sector. Mm -hmm. um, to R&D is one. Mm. As we speak, none of the indigenous company or very few indigenous company are R&D based. I'm sure if there are incentives for these guys to invest so in So we need incentives for R&D in, uh, Yeah, yeah, R&D in pharmaceuticals. Secondly, uh, cost of fund is very mm. high. You want so, to go into yeah. capital projects, Financing. you want to upgrade your facility, facilities and all that. But then you look at the, you know, the policies. Mm. In other countries, uh, pharma sector should be a vibrant sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the health reform policy, government uh, procurement policy to be able to patronize the companies go a long way to, to fuel uh, the growth in the sector. Uh, none of the pharma sector, pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria is WHO you know, uh, compliant in terms mm -hmm. of the GMP. Mm -hmm. Quite a number now are working towards accreditation by WHO. We're missing a bit there because there is no fund annually around antiretrovirus, anti-malaria, and TB medicines. But it's a global fund. As long as we cannot uh, have WHO compliant fat a factory in Nigeria, we cannot benefit from access that, that uh, access that fund. Totally, when you come to the, the, the back end, all the raw materials, none is manufactured in Nigeria. Mm. We see import raw materials from Asia, from wherever, and all that. So even when you import all this, you, you are not you, competitive. You are not competitive. You can't play global because you see you are still dependent on those other. Those yeah, but I, I think in this wise, uh, if government can fast track, you know, the takeoff of the petrochemical industry, which will fit fine chemicals and all that, it's not only pharmaceuticals but other relevant, uh, you know, uh, sectors. That will go a long way to actually make uh, the pharma sector you know, more competitive. If you had a chance to advise policymakers in the health sector, 
not just across the Federation and in the federal ministry, what will be the most critical reforms that you would expect them to push? On preventive medicine. Mm. If we don't, if we, if we don't see the importance of reducing our death, uh, infant, infant mortality rate, helped on health insurance, maternal mortality rate, helped the health insurance, consumption of drugs, helped the health insurance, mm. and many other things. We will miss it. Exciting, interesting perspectives. We've had a lot. R and D, finance, the policy environment, access to donor funds, improving domestic manufacturing. And Dr. Ogundimu in particular has stressed the importance of preventive medicine. We'll be back 